power on the drive and wait for ready. Since it is a good drive, click Auto Detect to identify the program. After entering the program, the left panel shows the drive ID. This is a physical connection demonstration of the terminal device. After confirming the connection is correct, select the corresponding terminal serial port device. Double click the serial port switch. Two prolific terminal serial port devices appear. The rectangular chip on the left is current MRT new terminal on sale. Its driver ID includes PL2303GC. The square chip on the right is the previous new terminal release version. Its driver ID does not include PL2303GC. Both perform identically. And both support the new drive 3 MB and 6 MB ultra high board rates. Since I connected the rectangular chip version, therefore select the serial device with PL2303GC. As long as the terminal is not replaced, no need to reselect next time. How to confirm terminal communication is correct. Usually we power off and on. Feedback appears in terminal window indicating normal communication. Since the drive is ready, the family can be auto-identified. Ready state allows to obtain ID info. Use the default folder name. When not ready, it is named with time. It is recommended to add a suffix such as date. Now we need to wait for the log feedback to finish. We see that no useful firmware info has been obtained. This is because the drive has built-in firmware lock. We click Terminal T level. Send the CQ. Terminal reports, diagnostic port locked. Indicating that firmware lock exists. In ROM tool select boot code mode. Usually use default board rate. For outdated models from over a decade ago. You can try 230,403-8400. Now we need to wait for the completion of reading ROM. We always suggest making a ROM backup. In patch column click on firmware unlock. Confirm feedback result. Save unlocked ROM and name it. Since current ROM is already unlocked we write it to the drive. Because boot code mode is not the normal power on mode. We need to reset power. MRT unlock sign here is the MRT handshake marker. Exchange commands to complete the unlock step. After ready, enter terminal T level. Typing the CQ can get feedback indicating unlock success. Now we need to sequentially obtain key firmware information. Click Reload to retrieve the four lists on the left. After everything is obtained. We need to do a full resource backup.
Here we can skip modules 0C262F. We marked some important system files. Since this is only a demo. To save time we skip system file backup first. The red feedback here shows modules skipped by default. Backup finished. Now we explain how to backup when the drive shows a long busy light. When BSY light is on. The upper options and the first three lists on the left cannot be obtained. You must check read via serial port to get system file list. Before reading you must first access T-level. Open system file list. We demonstrate using COM mode to backup system files. Personally, I prefer sorting by ID first. Usually suggest backing up at least system files 1B28, 35, 20 d When drive is ready, use default ATA mode. Due to long busy state, switch to COM mode i.e. serial port mode. Set board rate to 460,800. During the earlier system file list fetch, board rate was already synced to 460,800. No need to set again. We demonstrate reading system file 1B via serial port. You can see the read speed is very slow. This is why we set the board rate. Usually 460,800 is the best choice for compatibility and stability. After reading we save the file. Since COM mode is slow and the drive is ready. To save time we switch to ATA mode to back up the remaining system files. As this drive belongs to LM series, it is recommended to also back up system file 348. Next we exit the program. Power off and on. Since current ROM has been unlocked, the drive will not become ready after power on. We enter Seagate program manually. After confirming terminal connection, reset power once more. Watch the terminal feedback. Once MRT unlock sign appears, click DM exchange commands. When ready, the family can be identified and the program will load. For the folder choose the same one used last time. Normally we also need a basic data check. Open sector viewer to confirm data accessibility. Run logical scan to verify drive response. This demo drive shows some slow spots in the middle. Now enter data copy module. Create a test task. With no other drive attached. Select file image as target to save data. Confirm the task save path.
Step 1 is to create head bitmap. Both methods are available. The second method is used when heads are weak. We cancel creation first. Check the window column. Ensure the current ATA port is not occupied by another program. Only keep the required program active to build head bitmap. Enter Seagate program. The three options below are usually related to head bitmap. If building fails, it is mostly because these parameters were not refreshed. Or there is head problem. We fetch the information in order. Return to the Data Explorer module. Create head bitmap. We demonstrate the remaining steps. Recommend a few task parameter settings. Tick fast copy. If heads are weak. Set read block size to 100 or below. In File Explorer, simply confirm the file tree expansion. Next we show how to revert the unlocked ROM back to the original. Otherwise the drive will not become ready on power-up. There are two methods. First, select the original ROM backed up last time. Write it directly to the drive. Second, read the current unlocked ROM. In the patch panel delete the unlock code. Confirm the log feedback. Then write to the drive. Note that this method does not apply to every unlocked ROM. For ROMs unlocked with the MRT handshake 2 method. We can only write back the original backup ROM. Restoring by deleting the unlock code is not possible. After writing back the original ROM power cycle the drive. Now the drive becomes ready normally. We exit the program now. Here additional notes on family identification, when a Seagate drive is not ready. You can use boot code mode to identify the family ID. However pay attention to new series drives manufactured around or after 2022. These drives cannot access ROM data directly. The chip must be desoldered and read with a programmer. It is recommended to collect information on such drives, such as label details, family and PCB version. Above is the full guide on firmware unlocking, thank you.